Hey everyone, Sean Clement here with my best guy, Edouard Montaz. Hi guys. And look where we are, right in front of the Eiffel Tower. Can you believe it? Man, we got people getting wet, married over there. We got people doing yoga over here. It's a little old, nice and early in the morning. And um, I'm here to renew our little perpetual motion drill. And we're going to start with Edward, who's Grass got his, his wonderful grass whip. Any, anybody who wants to buy this in Europe, by the way, yeah, you, Amazon, right? Exactly. You go on Amazon, you tape grass whip, and you will find this. Perfect. And it's 20 bucks, right? Exactly. There you go. So we have it in Europe as well. Hey, cool. I'm so happy to host you in Paris. Man. To be your host. I love this guy. <laughs> I love this city. It's just, yeah. uh, we had an amazing time. We had a fantastic yeah. day on the golf course on Monday. Yeah. We had a beautiful, we had beautiful sessions yesterday on Tuesday. I'm sure you saw the Instagram. <laughs> and uh, here we are. We're going to be doing perpetual motion drill right here in front of the Eiffel Tower. So I'm going to have Edward here uh, perform the task with the grass whip. Okay. And if you stand right on this end here, Edward. And from, you, and in you, front. Like this, um, you're going to be cutting grass along this okay, side there. Perfect. So, as you start, if you just start with perpetual motion back and through. So, all he's doing is just cutting grass in each direction. And you notice, he is feeling the weight or feeling the, the, the sole of the instrument brush the grass in both directions. And look at how effortless that is. So, he's starting with the arm motion. So if you rock the arms, there you go, let him swing fully. And then notice how the body is reacting to the swing of the arms. So as you become a mm -hmm. seasoned professional of grass, grass whip. whipping, right? Um, you, you don't really start by yanking and shoving the club in both directions. So mm -hmm. if you start manipulating this thing and you're trying to cut the grass with manipulation, the brain's going to freeze your body. <laughs> See that? Notice that the body doesn't want to move anymore because it senses that you're trying to manipulate the whip to, to cut the grass. Yeah. Whereas if you allow the weight of your arms and club to cut the grass. Yes. So, so basically what we're creating here. A circle. We got a ball and a string, right? Yeah. So if I track, you notice how it's tracking this gorgeous arc. So the, the ball would be the, the cutting tool. The string would be the shaft and the arms. And Edward's shoulder sockets would be where I'm actually holding the string. Yeah. So notice when I'm going up and down. See how my hand's going up and down? When the ball is up, I'm pulling down. And when the ball is down, I'm pulling up. So if I stop doing this, the motion stops. So now I'm going to have to start using arm power instead. So you, you need to bounce. You need you to have use the ground. to go up and down, right? We were just okay. looking at little John Daly's swing this morning, <laughs> and he's got this beautiful little up and down motion in his swing, and that's why he's getting the most out of his swing right now. And everybody loves his rhythm. Yeah. Well, that's how you find your rhythm, mm -hmm. isn't it? Can so, I have a walk just to show? Yes, please. So now, as you become really good at performing, then you can start walking, and you'll notice that. He's cutting his rows. You can see the blur of that grass whip, can't you, Edward? Yeah, for sure. And because you can see the blur at the I bottom can of where, predict yes. where it passes. So you can see where the where you need to step to cut your next row of exactly. grass, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. So this is really important, you guys, because many of you don't even see where the club is passing. You don't understand or you don't know where the, the actual club is passing. So if I had these tees on the ground here. Thank you, Edward. You're welcome. So if I put this ball on a string, I can see the blur of the ball, and then I just bring it over to the tees here, and I can say, yep, that's over that tee, that's over that tee, it's over that tee. So if, if you can actually see where the club is passing, your brain now has a reference as to how far you need to be from the ball. Dynamically. Yes, exactly. Mm. So first things first, here is, an arm, this is your ball and a string with one arm. The swing is here, the shoulder socket. And you notice how my arm and club is performing a nice circular action. Now, notice the club is passing right underneath my shoulder socket. So I can do the same thing here and start walking around and cut my rows of grass. So when I get my posture, I'm bending forward from my hips. I want to see, first and foremost, obviously, I want to activate 
the quads and the glutes and apply the, the nice suction into the grass from my arches. And when I'm swinging back and through, I want to feel that my glutes and quads are constantly active and they're helping me propel the club. So as I go back, my left arm doesn't hit my rib cage. Go to my arms and body timing video, an oldie but a real goodie. That's one of the cornerstones of wisdom in golf. And so now we're not allowing the arms to hit the rib cage and the way it works is you're actually using the ground to remove the rib cage and the pelvis out of the way because your shoulders only have 20 degrees of range and when you bring your hands together you got nothing left. So I allow the arm club unit to swing freely and my body is reacting to that and getting out of the way and then I get to see where the club is passing. So oh there we go. Now if I cut my rows the same way Edward did Notice the rows are going to be a little tighter than the grass width, letting it cut. And I feel my legs active and I can see where the grass width is passing, then I'm going to let it cut through the tees. Notice as I come through the tees, there's no added speed, speed to it. I'm not trying to hit the tees. And then what you want to do is Put some wiffle balls on your tees when you're in your backyard. It's yeah. a great way to do it. And you'll notice that you won't feel the need to hit a wiffle ball because it's air. Mm. And then you want to take that sensation to your golf balls. Mm. You have two arms, right? One arm is 9% of your body weight. <laughs> so times two plus a club for a 200 pound person, that's 40 pounds of arms. Quite so heavy. the ball has no chance against that. And you realize that when the weight of the arms and club is swinging through, you'll realize that the ball will not stop that. So there's no need for you to apply any hit. Now, if you want to add some velocity to it, and you do this very well, Edward. Let me <laughs> see that beautiful squat of yours. Yeah, my friend. So go ahead and face the camera. Okay, so. So show me that perpetual motion. Without any help? Without any help. Body. Okay. So notice one. how the body looks like it's flowing. I let it fall. That's it. No crash. No crash. Now the last one I want you to do is give it a good whip. Now, did you see how much more <laughs> he went to the ground? He's getting really good. Okay. You're, <laughs> Finally. You're really getting took good. Took me 10 buddy. years, but I'm, I'm there. There you go. F so, from, from the profile view? Maybe? Yeah, absolutely. So, they so see. watch how active his legs are in propelling that club. So if you were throwing the club toward that Eiffel Tower, tomahawking it over there. So I would, I would go up, get the ground, yes. and remove my body with the ground. Throw. And you notice, you don't really have to think about that, do you? No way. When you're doing the walking and swinging. No. So let's say you were doing, let's say, do uh, three throws as you walk toward the okay. Eiffel Tower. So one. Throw two. it out there. Three. Throw it out there. Throw it out there. See how gorgeous that move is? It is It is so... Thank you, buddy. You're welcome. This guy's awesome. This guy's awesome also. <laughs> so you've got this amazing machine here. Don't look at this gift horse in the mouth, please. Mm. It is designed for gravity. It's a gravity genius. Mm. So you're, you're feeling the weight of the instrument. And the weight of your arms? Absolutely. So it's hanging from the mm -hmm. shoulder sockets down. The center of that unit is here, the sternal notch. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice that when I'm walking towards you, and this is the last little phase, so if you're, you're struggling with swaying in the backswing, or you're getting way too ahead of the ball, mm -hmm. and you're, you're, you're getting you know, pain in the hip, or the, the knee, or the, the ankle, if I'm walking towards you, you'll notice my center of gravity right between, the, this is the center point where you have equal weight up and down, front to back and side to side. If I'm walking towards you, you'll notice my center of gravity stays between my feet. You'll notice I won't walk <laughs> this way. I'm not going to go to the outside of my feet and you're not designed to walk like this. So if I'm walking and swinging towards you, notice how the weight can't go to the outside of my feet because if they do, then I won't be able to take the next step. So the brain is looking for the next step and it's got to organize you in a way that you're not going to go outside the feet. So perpetual motion drill and the walking drill, amazing units for you to, 
to perfect your golf swing and it really is the key and to, to, to golf bliss. Exactly and we have a soccer team behind. I know. Our huh? girls. <laughs> And we have good applause. I know, Great. isn't that cool? We have when you were cutting little, the grass, they were applauding. Little, ga little gallery. So, uh, last thing I wanted to talk about yeah, when you're friend. doing that perpetual motion drill and the walking drill is when you want to get more speed mm. and you want to get more power. And, and I know many of you are looking for that. All you need is more range of motion. So, all we're going to do is mm. remove the body even more as we're performing that exactly. perpetual motion drill in the walk. So. I want to feel how my back is turning to the target. <laughs> and that's where I'm going to get that extra speed in my swing. Many of you are doing the perpetual motion like this or the walking drill while you're staying in control you really have to give the arm club unit away completely mm. and get this out of the way completely in either direction. Don't let the left arm hit you going back. Don't let the right arm hit you coming through. So you're really getting that maximum range of motion. And you notice as you're performing that walk, you still can't go to the outside of your feet. So very amazing way to contain the power. Yeah, just to say something about this, I used to use my arm yep. a lot when I was beginning. Yes. Beginner. And the more you get in the best level of your, of your golf swing, the more you will feel that your legs are moving. Yes. For me right now, I, I, I hold the grip tight because I don't want Secure. it. Secure. No smooth grip. That's it. So I hold the bird and I <laughs> That's right. compress the bird. Compress the bird. But now I feel the weight hanging. Yes. And then I give it to gravity from here. Yes. And then my legs get in the yeah. move. And for me, it's so so cool because all, all my juice is, is, is in my legs. That's it. So I don't use my arms anymore. No manipulation exactly. at all. Exactly. That's so funny. So you're, you're catching your backswing with your squat. Exactly. Yeah. It's, a, oh. it's an amazing machine, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Hope you enjoy that, you guys. Enjoy the view. See you in the next one. See you guys. Thanks, Edward. You're welcome.